Hello guys, it do be your boy Chili. Welcome back to Reflective Serialization. Uh, so we've been we've been setting up a little system here. We've been taking our time. We got two processes. One's a console application. One is a graphical application. The console application is the parent. It spawns this process. And then this process connects to its parent, and then the parent can send commands to the child process. So the parent is it is parsing its standard input, and it's sending these commands then to the child. The child is executing those commands. We got it. We got a move command, and we got a little command here to set the title of the child process. And that's very that's very nice. We enjoy it. Now, if you've been around Planet Chili for a while, you know how I operate, right? I like to do a little setup. I like to show you something, a way of doing a thing. And then I show you some new sauce that you can use that does it way better. So, I'm setting up the sucky thing. But you may be looking at it and saying, Chili, you know, this don't, this don't look too bad. You got, um, you know, you've got some commands here as structures. Okay, that's all right. Send command, it serializes them. This looks pretty clean. And if we look at the deserialization, well, that looks kind of clean too. I mean, it's maybe it's a little redundant, but it's, you know, it's fairly consistent, symmetric. This doesn't look too bad, Chili. So, let me, because this is like a really simple example. These command structures are very simple. We're just going to bump up the intricacy just a little bit and see what that does to the complexity of our code. So I'm just going to make a very minor change here. Now the title command, instead of having one string, it's going to have two strings. Why does it have two strings? I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm just trying to show you what happens when things get just a little bit more complicated. It's still not that complicated, but we've added another string in here. So we've added a string. We should probably use it. So in the code here for the client process, we should use title and schmeitel. Now we can do that like this. We just format a string that uses both title and schmeitel, and then we use that formatted string as the title. Very easy. We also need to now spit out, we need to parse the standard input and spit out both of those strings into the command. So although it's a bit of overkill, we're going to use regex again just because, you know, it's consistent. And we are parsing it, basically take the first token goes into title, and the rest of the argument string goes into Schmeidel. And that's that's going to be good enough for us. So that should take care of the application layer on the client and server. But now we got to look at the transport layer. How does this stuff get serialized into the bytes that have to go over the wire? Um, okay, so this one, obviously, send command. Command that title is not going to do it because this thing has two. Yeah, it's not, doesn't make any sense. We got we to gotta put two strings into our payload bytes. And that's a little more complicated before when we deserialize this stuff. It was very easy for us because all we needed to do, we could just inspect the payload size and say, okay, that's how many bytes are going to go into our title string and then read that many bytes out. But now the payload size has the size of both the uh, title and the schmeidel. And it's ambiguous as to how big the title is and how big the schmeidel. We only know the sum. So now we have to include extra information in our payload other than the data itself. We have to include some metadata about how big the title is versus how big the schmeidel is. And we could do this a couple of ways. We could, we could use a null terminator somewhere. Or we could just put the sizes, you know, directly in there, explicitly in the payload. And I'm going to do the size approach. Both approaches have their, you know, pluses and minuses, but they're kind of equivalent in how annoying they are to implement. Just a side note here. Whenever we're working with template stuff, you know that we don't usually get IntelliSense because it doesn't know what we're dealing with, right? However, in the case of an if const expert, we do know what we're dealing with inside here. But the compiler is not smart enough to figure that out. So what we can do, we can use a little shortcut in here. And then if we use this shortcut, now we can get IntelliSense. And, you know, this is going to be optimized out anyways, so it's not, it's not hurting anything, but it does make our life easier. So there's my little shortcut. Now, what are we going to do to serialize this data? Well, we can't just pass it directly on to send command because we have two strings that we got to pass 
plus the metadata. So we have to now build up a separate vector of our bytes, a little buffer here. We populate the buffer, and then we send it to the send command function. So here's the binary layout of our payload that we're going to use. Uh, this is this is our protocol basically. So we've got. I'm going to use for the size of these two strings. I'm going to use a uint 16 because I don't think you need a title that's larger than 64,000 characters. So we put the two sizes at the front of the payload, size n and size m, and then after that you have the string for the title and the string for the schmeitel. So the first thing we need to do is get our vector of bytes sized correctly so that we can write, we have places where we can write all this data into. So the size of our buffer is going to be the size of two of these size entries plus the size of the title string plus the size of the schmeidel string. And there you go. There is our buffer all sized up. Now we just got to write in the parts of the buffer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinterpret the buffer as the pointer to uint 16, basically as an array of uint 16s. And so the first element of that array is going to be size n, and that's equal to the size of the title. And then the second uint 16 is going to be the size of the schmeitel. And now we just got to write those bytes in there. Now when we're working with all this, you know, pointer arithmetic, byte offset arithmetic, it's nice to write out your, to write out your steps, to show your work in your code. So let's just create a little signpost little piece of temporary data in here, the data start offset. So this is the start of our data, which is the point after our two uint 16s. Now I don't believe that I defined my little happy shortcut, but you know I want my ranges. So I'm going to copy from what range? Well obviously we want to copy from the title into the beginning of our data. So that's data plus data start offset. That's where the title goes in, right after these two uint 16s. And now after this string, we want to put the other string. And so to this offset here, we add an additional offset of the size of the string that we just wrote into the buffer. And so that gives us the start of where we can put the second string, the schmeitel. And now we got the title, and we got the schmeitel, and we're not going to send this, we're just going to send in our data buffer directly. And there you go. This happy horse crap is what we need to do to serialize two strings. So we added one line to our command that bloated us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines into our serialization code. So as you can see, this doesn't scale very well. This approach that we have is not great. But, you know, whatever, let's build it. What's your problem here? Data start offset. I was staring at this for like, I'm not gonna lie, like two minutes thing, like what the hell is the problem? Yeah, okay, okay. All right, that builds. So we should we should have zero problems, right? This should work. There's definitely nothing wrong with what I just did. Okay, let's send our title. All right, so we send title, herp, derp, and we got this. We got this in our title. Oh, good. Uh, der. Yeah, when you add something, when you make a change here, well, you got to support, you got to change your serialization. You also got to remember to change the other side. And if you forget to change one side, the funny thing is, it might it might compile fine. The compiler might not tell you anything. And uh, sometimes the, the error might not even be apparent enough. It might sneak through, you know, testing. If you don't have very rigorous testing, it might sneak right into production. Wow, that's fun. Isn't that a fun thing to have? in your code base. But yeah, no, this is only half the work we have to do. We also have to now deserialize this bullshit. So when we just had one string in the title, it was very easy. We could just use the payload size directly um, to read into the string. Now we we can't do things like that. It's going to take a little more work. So let's create a little vector here. So we want to read into our buffer here now. And then we have to start pulling the data out of that buffer. So the first uint 16 in the buffer is going to be the size of the title. The second one is going to be the size of the schmeitel. Put in my data start offset in there again. And now we got to do some iterator pointer mathing. So the range based copy is not a good fit for this. I think we want to do copy in. And we're going to do buffer begin plus the data start. So that gives us the start of the title in the buffer. 
and we want the size of the title. And we want to copy that into the title. So we put that right in there. And then we got to do the same thing for the Schmeitel. Again, the only difference is we need the buffer begin plus the data start plus the size of the title now. That's the start of the copy. All right. So this should be okay. I don't know, man. It's like it's like a coin flip as to whether this works the first time around. Well, I guess the second time around if you uh, if you count the last try. All right, here we go. I hope this works cuz I do not want to debug this bullshit. Ah, and it worked. Okay, so we did successfully round trip our data there. Yes, it is working as expected. Okay. Okay. And there you have it. We got we got a few reasons why we don't like the system that we have. The first reason is that it's kind of a lot of work and it's pretty easy to screw up this uh, pointer math bullshit pointers and offsets it's not great the second thing is that whenever we add whenever we do a change to one of these structures we have to make sure we change it here and here and that they line up perfectly and it's just I don't like I never love that situation that that's what that's a that's a bug factory in the making right there so hopefully hopefully I have illuminated the need for there must be a better way there's got to be a better way than this. How? What does Chile propose instead of this bug factory? Well, that's going to be in the next video. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy. Click the like button, all the good stuff, and I'll see you again with some more reflective serialization.